Looking for a fun, new, exciting way to play fantasy sports? Make sure to check out FanDuel. Use code BENGAL at sign up for a $20 deposit bonus when you enter that code. It is the best and most fun way to play daily fantasy sports. I know I play fantasy football for the daily fantasy sports all the time. I can't really handle the grind of the season. So this is just the best way and the most fun way for me to play any type of fantasy sports. I've been doing it for a couple of years now and FanDuel is just absolutely the best. So make sure to use code BENGAL at sign up. $20 deposit bonus. And also, if you guys want to check out my second and third channels for other videos and games you might see with some of your other favorite YouTubers that I collab with. Make sure you check that out. Both links are in the description. Welcome back to another episode of NCAA 14 Team Builder Dynasty featuring the Ozark State Outlaws. If you did not see episode number one, I highly recommend you check that out. Don't want anyone in the comments to be like, man, I ain't never heard of no damn Ozark State Outlaws. Who in the hell are they? Just go watch episode one, you'll find out. But today, we will have arguably our toughest test of the season. No, we played Alabama. I mean, <laughs> like, West Virginia is a decent team. They're sitting at 1 1. We are 0 1 going into our second game of the season here in week three. It's going to be interesting because I think we did show some stuff against Alabama. We had some decent drives. But we just, we, you couldn't stop the Crimson Tide. They just kind of rolled through us. Derek Higgins out of Oak Place, or Oak Hills Place, Louisiana. Hard hitting cornerback. We only have 50 points. We're going to offer him a scholarship. We're not that far behind on him. He seems decent. It's close to his home. Program tradition be mine is interesting. We're not exactly a championship contender. Debatable. He looks like he has decent speed. Play racks high. Man coverage is good. Don't really have him scouted all the way, obviously. Can we steal him over my favorite team, the Texas Longhorns and the LSU Tigers? Maybe, maybe. Because a lot of people also wanted to know about the actual settings. I don't remember if I showed them. So these are them. Game rules, everything uh, is 50 for the actual rules. And then custom IA, everything for us is 45, except for interceptions, which is 65. And then the kicking is 50. And then for the CPU, um, they are rocking 60 for everything, except for, again, the kicking, which is at the default 50. So this is not going to be an easy series, and I don't want it to be. I want this to be, you know, a few seasons before we're even decent, maybe. But it's all going to be from recruiting, and maybe this could be, you know, even faster to, you know, for our rise to success. But we are, you know, not heavily favored here against the West Virginia Mountaineers. But it is our first home game. Our home opener at dual field. The jungle in Ozark State. Let's see what we can do. Welcome to the jungle at dual field. Today we're hosting the Mountaineers, but you guys already know that. What is Bengus Khan wearing? <laughs> what is that? He's wearing a polka dot jacket. Interesting. There's not a whole lot of legacy. Yeah, show the show the polka dot undershirt and <laughs> overshirt. But yeah, I like how the first thing that pops up is heart. Because that's like kind of the only thing we got going for us. It's not talent. Insane offense. Great defense. Superb pass rush. It's heart and determination. All right. See what we can do here against West Virginia. Oh, my. We got Ron Norman back to return. Maybe the slowest player in the entire nation. He has a little bit of room to work with. Maybe gets it to the 17 or 18. We're going to keep trying it. Eventually... Ron Norman might get one to the 30. Our first play on offense. Let's see if anything gets open. And we're actually just going to check down to Kirkpatrick. Got a little bit of, uh, I don't know, I had a stroke there. But it's just the ability of Pedro Goddard to throw the football. It just, it gets me going, all right? He's going to be on Heisman watch before you know it. That could be a blitz off that left edge. We're going to go ahead and change it up here. We've had our most success when we've come out. And we've run a vertical style concept as we're going to roll out. Oh, that was not blocked. We're going to throw it away. Okay. 
none, nothing got blocked. Is that okay? That's intentional grounding. Ah, uh, all right. Well, better than the sack, maybe. Eh, probably not actually. It is third down and 22. We're gonna need a big gain here, and we're going inside to the tight end. It is Rodriguez. Jake Rodriguez, 25 yards up the middle. West Virginia was leaving that wide open, and you can't do that in that situation. We're going to our big tight end, one of the biggest playmakers on this entire team. Rodriguez is in motion. Play action of Maxwell. We're going to dump it off to the big tight end again. And the athleticism and agility on showcase there as it took him about five seconds to even turn around. Oh, that's open. It's Roland Francisco, and he's dropped the ball. The first incompletion for Goddard today. And it should never have even been one. Should be a first down. Try a screen here on third and nine. It is not picked up well. Decent blocking. And our blockers actually got in front of us. I think Darren Maxwell is going to be short. Oh, but they give it to him. I'm not complaining. First down, here's the play action. We are going to try and step up and find something. But it looked like most options were covered. Pedro Goddard kind of has a little bit of a noodle, if you guys remember. So can't really afford to throw anything into tight windows. Second and 14, we're going with a counter to Maxwell. Nobody even knows he has the ball. Third down and two. We're actually moving the football a little bit this game. And we're going to throw it to Roland Francisco, who definitely picks up the first down. Maybe not the best decision there, but it works out. Tight end set. We're actually going to lob it deep to one of them, and we're sacked. The West Virginia Mountaineer defense gets to us, led by Sean Walters. All right, third and 20. We've completed something like this so far today. And we have a wide open man. It's the tight end, Rodriguez. Jake Rodriguez, unstoppable here so far today. Threw a fella off. And uh, he just seems to be our go-to option on third down. He's just so big. Of course, we have another tight end, Gabriel Timmons. Wide left of your screen. Might look to get him involved. He was big last week. But we're going to roll out with Goddard. Maybe have a dump off to the running back as an option, but we are taking off. And Pedro Goddard fumbles the ball. It's recovered by Darren Maxwell, but jeez. Again, another reason not to vote for Pedro. We got to cap off this long drive with a touchdown, surely. Third and three. We've been dominant on offense so far today. And I can't really find anything. We're again just going to throw it out the back of the end zone with Pedro Goddard. Got to stop turning around and sprinting the other direction. It's a very bad habit. Here's the kick, though, on fourth and three. Going to split the sticks and put three points on the board. Ozark with their first lead in program history. I'm using Montrell Gardner here. We'll see what he can do in man coverage. We got to tackle Howard. How can nobody get to him? He's a bowling ball. Skyler Howard. The West Virginia tight end is a monster. And are they going to be running hurry up offense all game? I don't know if our defense can match up well with that. Shell is motion out wide. And the throw is to Durante. Javon Durante. Five yards. Oh, Howard has all day. He has so much room as well. Skyler Howard running the football could be a very, very big issue today. That, makes it first and ten. that is going to be a major problem. Howard's going to run again and the ball is loose. It's recovered by Washington. Let's go. The Ozark State defense came to play. Howard rolls out right into Mullins who forces the football loose. He is our biggest playmaker on the defensive line. Had a sack last week, I believe. And let's go. Ozark State takes over on offense. Throwing the slant. That's open. It's Karan Kirkpatrick who picks up the first down. Ozark State is moving. West Virginia has no answer for the offense. And if our defense can just make plays like they have, it is going to be a long day for the Mountaineers. Throw out wide. Can we get it in there? We can. It's Roland Francisco, the true freshman, with a 15-yard pickup and a first down. Second and inches, handoff to Cody. He bowls over one. And Riley Cody picks up a fresh set of downs for the Ozark State offense. Ah, uh, maybe had RB, but Goddard is fast. Had Y. We're going to keep running with Pedro Goddard. Another first down for the Outlaws. Third and ten. 
Who do we go to here? Karan Kirkpatrick on the outside. Might have some type of isolation. We're just going to check it down to Maxwell. Don't want to turn over the ball in this situation. Fourth and six. I think we're just going to settle for three points again. I'm not really a great field goal kicker, but I think we should be able to make this one. And we don't. Okay, that is wide right. Sweet. Somebody get Howard. He's going to run again. He's got another first down. Skyler Howard. Trying to show that sky's the limit. You haven't put up any points in Ozark State. Check yourself. We got Lightning McQueen out here. Let's get on him, please. All right. Let's stop Washington. Nope. Fuck. Howard's going to run again. And he's brought down. Sacked by, you guessed it, Brian Mullins. The only good player on our entire defense, it seems. He makes another play here. Oh, that's open. Wanna break on the ball, Watts? Delivers a huge hit, but Shelton Gibson for 21 yards in the first down. I don't know if Watts is playing blindfolded as somebody in his ear telling him that the ball's thrown right into his area. And that's a user pick! Easy reads! Montrell, Gardner, Green Eggs, and Ham, and the Ozark State Outlaws are back on O. What a play by the senior middle linebacker. Oh my goodness. Pedro Goddard sacked again. This time, it is also Sean Walters. Nobody seems to be able to block him. That's a terrible slant by Francisco. We're going to roll out with Goddard. Looking for some option, and they over-pursued. It's Pedro Goddard with a huge pickup. 24 yards on the quarterback scramble. And we're going to go one-on-one. -on -one. That is, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's picked off by Avery. Roland Francisco comes back to make the tackle, but look at the one-on-one. -on -one. We had it, and Pedro Goddard looks like he's only capable of throwing the ball maybe 20 yards in the air. What you, I, I know Pop Warner quarterbacks that can air it out for at least 30. What is that? That's a throw over the middle. Watts can't wrap up. And Karan Wright gets him two yards short of the first down. West Virginia staying in the hurry up so far this game. Under three minutes to play. They have all the time in the world. Surprised they're not trying to manage the clock a little bit better. It's a read option. Oh, uh, there's a lot of space. It's a one-on-one -on -one and a huge hit. Skylar Howard gets the first down anyway, but wow. He paid for it. And blitz again. Gardner can't get to him. It's Shell again. And Outlaw can't wrap up for the Outlaws. And Shell the third picks up nine. Step up defensive line. They stop Crawford short of the goal line. Picks up one. And the Mountaineers are doing a little bit more than knocking on the door. Get over there. It's caught by Karan White. Skylar Howard showing excellence today. I know the interception, but he's been fantastic. Through the air on the ground. This is going to be a tough second half. But that's burned. And it's underthrown and nearly intercepted again by Toyus Avery. We had man press or cover to destroy down the wing. And it does not pay off. Let's see if we can get the first down on third and nine. We're going to roll out and pretty much into trouble. Goddard gets by him. Stiff arms to the sideline. Fresh set of downs again for the Outlaws. Pedro Goddard. Getting it done on the ground today. And he really hasn't been through the air. Any kind of deep throw. I'm not voting for Pedro again. He just can't throw it that far. He can't. We're going to roll out again. We have two options here with X and RB. But we're going to hope that he can block for us. And they do. Pedro Goddard picks up another first down. And the polka dot head coach will call his first timeout. We're really just a run first offense with the quarterback. This time it's Kedrick Cunningham. Where is Pedro Goddard? Is he injured? That's over the middle and caught by Roland Francisco. Ozark going to call their final timeout of the first half. Three seconds to go. And we will settle for the field goal try. I will really will say try because it is not a given. 
given my abilities. And the kick barely squeaks through. Okay. It would be 9-7. to seven. Ozark State had we not missed the second field goal attempt of the game. But it is what it is. We're doing our best out here. And I was never a great kicker on the old uh, style of things. So that's, that's my bad. Oh, that is wide open. Gibson this time gets a foot down. 23 yards and a new first down. Somebody get after him. Nope. He's going to roll through another outlaw. Shell's been doing it all game. Oh, let's go, baby. Howard in the backfield. Five-yard loss on the play. Skyler Howard cannot get it going here now in the third quarter. Defense is stepping up. However, they are finding other means of offense. That's the only problem there. Come on, Montrell. Trying to cover like three different players, and we can't do it. And Trayvon Wesco has a 32-yard touchdown to extend the Mountaineers' lead. Likely will be 14-6, to which means that we need a touchdown and a two-point conversion to get back in this game. Do not want to make it 13 to 14. Here's play action. Got her back in the game. We're going to take a deep shot and he can't get the throw off. We had the post coming across the field. And Pedro Goddard just cannot hit him in time. And Goddard just can't throw the football is the problem. We go outside though. Throws it that time. It's Roland Francisco. The true freshman wide receiver. Huge gain on the play. And Ozark State now. First and goal. Look at the press beating route. Great ability to run that. Run that nine route. Run that go. We're going to roll out. Goddard. Throw it. Short for Timmons. And Gabriel Timmons takes a shot. He has the sole touchdown in Ozark State history. This time, trying to get his second and pays for it dearly. Third and goal. We're throwing short for Karan Kirkpatrick on the slant. He can't haul it in. Fourth and goal, a lot of time left. We are going to try for another field goal. This is not my favorite angle. And the kick is off the... Oh, man. All right. It is off the post and no good again. These angles are killing me. That is a quick screen almost to Karan White. Watch there for the tackle. But the West Virginia Mountaineers are moving. They're figuring out the gaps in our defense. And they're exploiting our flaws. That's going to be another read option. He's running into Brian Mullins. Mullins didn't really know about it though. So we can't wrap him up in the backfield. They only gained one, but this is a big third down. If we stop him... They could be out of field goal range. And it's a screen. Oh, nobody's on it. Montrell Gardner. Can't bring him down until he got the first down. Need to read that a lot better. That's the first time I think I've seen a screen this series. It is only the second game, but wasn't ready. And that's over the middle. A tackle is broken in another tackle. And Steven Smothers cannot be smothered. He gets a touchdown. West Virginia likely going to take a 21-6 lead with two minutes to play here in the third. It's not an insurmountable amount of points. But it's going to be tough. What is his name? Ron? Ron Swanson? I have no idea what his name is. That's picked off. We were looking for Roland. Actually, it was Karan Kirkpatrick. And that's a pick six. Rasul Douglas gets it. Wow, all right. And another polka dot. What, what's up with the polka dot shirts? I've never seen this. All right, come on, Kedrick Cunningham. We're going to roll out. That's a lot of speed. Cunningham breaks a tackle, though, and is still sacked. All right. He really can't throw the ball. I mean, even we ran a screen before this one. You guys didn't see it. It was not a great throw. We only got a couple of yards. We need space to run the ball. We're going to go one-on-one for Rodriguez. And he's open! What is the safety doing? 
We scored a touchdown with Kendrick Cunningham. Jake Rodriguez, 60 yards to the house. They're showing Pedro Goddard sat. That is Pedro Goddard. He's back in the game. Oh my goodness. That's how he completed it. We got Goddard back in the game. The God, vote for Pedro, two point conversion. And it's now back to a two touchdown game. Pedro Goddard is QB1. Dude, what are you doing, Fenner? Stay with your man in man-to-man -man coverage. Shelton Gibson again. We need the football back to have a chance. And Howard is wide open up the middle. Just drill him. Skyler Howard, 22 yards to the house. West Virginia going up likely 35-14. to 14. And Pedro Goddard's heroics seem like they were for naught. There's a lot of time left in the fourth. But we're going to have to score really quickly. And even then, it's going to be probably nearly impossible. Rolling out with Goddard. There is no playmaker feature in NCAA 14. I forgot about that. Wasn't introduced until, I believe, uh, what, Madden 25? Madden 15? Rolling out Goddard. Has some space and has a first down. Going down the middle. And that is on the money for Cunningham. That's a quarterback, Kedra Cunningham. 41 yards down the field, quarterback to quarterback. That 85 speed at wideout is the move. Kedra Cunningham. Second and goal, rolling out with Goddard. We got the touchdown. Pedro Goddard, it's only a two yard gain, but it puts us within two scores, two touchdowns. Two missed field goals wouldn't even really help out that much at this point. It's still you know, a 14 point game. We just need the football back. Okay, what is going on here? We're gonna need a great tackle. Justin Crawford has a 67 yard return. That's not gonna help us win this game. That's a read option, and it's gonna be another touchdown. I couldn't wrap up with Gardner. I tried to get on it. We could not. West Virginia is going to go up 42-21, doubling our points again. And that's probably all she wrote. That's open. It's Gabriel Timmons. The streak seemed to be the play here against West Virginia. We're running a lot of verticals, and they just don't really have an answer. That's open again. Goddard. Finds Roland Francisco, who drops the ball again. He's been having a great game, but these drops are killer. And that is open. It's Roland Francisco. He's been all over the place today. A couple of drops have held back his numbers, but six catches for 136 yards is pretty fantastic. Just think about what it could have been, though. That's where I am. Get back to the line, please. You know, Francisco again on the slant. He gets into the end zone for an eight-yard touchdown catch. And we've scored 28 points today. Could have been more. Add six to that. Ugh. Second and four, we need a stop. Man coverage hasn't really worked. It's a good tackle in the backfield. Third and eight. A turnover would be so huge. Because that gives us a chance. Come on, get after the quarterback. We're going to call a timeout. We stopped them from getting the first down. They are going to hit the field goal, though. It'll be 45-28. It's going to take a... It's going to take a miracle. At this point, it's kind of about stat padding. We'll see if anybody can go off. And we're going deep again. They don't cover the streaks at all. Roland Francisco, 40-yard reception. His stats are going to look insane after this. The Goddard to Francisco connection minus the drops has been incredible. That's open. Catch it in bounds, please. Karan Kirkpatrick, 27-yard touchdown. And we are playing our best football of the year, obviously. 
There is a review. I'm not sure if he got the foot down inbounds before the foot came down out of bounds. Looks like that's a touchdown. I don't think you can reverse that. Yep, touchdown, Ozark State. So, the game's going to look a lot closer than it was. We fought really hard today. And it's going to be a close finish-ish within 10 points, probably. But unless we get two onside kicks, I mean, it's, uh, it's likely done. And that is recovered by Karan White. And that is the ball game. And now... It is officially over. We're going to lose our home opener to West Virginia, 45-35, but we played pretty tough. We had an incredible offensive performance. The output was insane. Our defense was all right, just it was a high-powered offense, and we couldn't shut down the quarterback runs. Really, really was tough, but once we got the offense grooving with the streaks, I mean, we were moving. It was first down after first down after big play after big play. Kedrick Cunningham was a disaster, but Pedro Goddard is proving to be a decent option. He can't hit every throw. That's all right. He's only a sophomore. He'll get better. And, of course, was dominant running the ball because Darren Maxwell really wasn't receiving. Francisco, eight catches, 184 and a touchdown. Darren Maxwell was involved out of the backfield. Jake Rodriguez, the tight end, was nearly unstoppable. And Karan Kirkpatrick was pretty good. But what a performance by the true freshman, Roland Francisco, proving that speed kills. And our defense, no interceptions, two sacks for Brian Mullins, a couple tackles for loss for him as well. We actually did, oh yeah, the user pick with Montreal Gardner, the easy reads. And a forced fumble for Mullins that was recovered by Trey Washington, the senior defensive tackle. Obviously, no defensive touchdowns. But that was a close game. Unfortunately, we couldn't get the job done. Joey's next week, I guess. So Bengus Khan is now a level two after the loss to West Virginia. Unfortunately, dropping to 0-2. But next week, we face FCS East. Might actually be able to win one here. We also have a couple recruits ready to visit. So we might look to schedule those for some time. Uh, maybe not so much in the near future. I know that it gets better um, the later it is in the season. So we might try to do that one. But FCS East versus Ozark State will be in the next episode. I do appreciate you guys watching, and I hope you enjoyed. But until next time, that's going to be all for me, guys. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.